Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take a look back at a portable system that tried to challenge Big Nintendo and Sega with their first 16-bit portable console from Atari themselves, the Lynx. The Atari Lynx was developed by Epix and released by Atari in 1989. The system was a 16-bit handheld game console that initially competed against the Nintendo Game Boy that was released two months prior and other handhelds like the Sega Game Gear and NEC's Turbo Express. The console was able to sell just about 3 million units worldwide and was discontinued in 1995. The Lynx was the first handheld that incorporated a color LCD and was very noticeable for its advanced graphics. Epix originally developed the system to be called the Handy Game and was sent out to partner with distribution from Sega and Nintendo who both declined. Atari eventually handled the distribution and marketing while Epix handled the hardware and software until their eventual bankruptcy. Even with its redesign and at a lower price, the Lynx just didn't do what gamers really wanted and that was plain and simple have good games on the console. Even with the Game Gear coming out two years later and had a huge backing of games who became the sole competitor to Nintendo selling more than 10 million copies to the Lynx 3 million. Of course, Nintendo's Game Boy stole the show with about 118 million worldwide. In my humble opinion, the Lynx was an incredible powerful system but didn't have the right developers working on the system. It felt that the games tried to wow you with the visuals, but was lacking in everything else. Take a look at this port from Ninja Gaiden 3 Ancient Ship of Doom that was released on the Lynx and the original, less powerful, 8-bit original Nintendo. Most games just seemed a bit more sluggish and wasn't what you expect from a superior system. Not to say that they never produce fun games at all, here's a quick look at my favorites on the Atari Lynx. Blue Lightning was developed by Epix and released by Atari in 1989. This combat flight simulator reminds me of the arcade version of Afterburner by Sega and truly drew me in with its action and very, very nice visuals. Clax was developed and released by Atari in 1990, and it's a puzzle game port of the arcade original. I have to admit, although not very re revolutionary, the game holds its own very well with its addictive gameplay. Shadow of the Beast was developed by Digital Developments and released by Psygnosis in 1990 and this game is hard. If there was a Souls game back then that required precise controls, this is the one. The game itself is wonderful in its visuals and animation, but you need a lot of patience in this one to survive. Todd's Adventure in Slime World 
was developed by Epix and released by Atari in 1990. This side-scrolling action platformer is wonderfully animated and truly encourages exploration with its infinite number of lives to learn what not to do and to experiment. Rygar was developed and released by Tecmo in 1990 and follows its arcade counterpart more closely than other ports. This game is your usual kill all monsters in your way with your huge spinning shield that is reminiscent to a yo-yo, but surprisingly fun action platformer that will give you a run for your money. Stunrunner was developed and released by Atari in 1991 and was based on its arcade counterpart that featured a fast-paced destroy what's in front of you goal. This game proved that the system definitely has the power to impress with its fast-paced racing and visuals to see how far you can really get. Ninja Gaiden was developed by Blue Sky Software and released by Atari in 1990. This version is the only version based on the arcade that was brought home to the home consoles. Although easier than the arcade that truly sucked away my quarters, the game still delivers a challenge and it's pretty good action beat em up overall. of Zendikon was developed by Epic and released by Atari in 1989. The game is a side-scrolling space shooter that has a whopping 51 levels to blast the enemy on screen into space. Toki was developed and released by Taito and was based on the arcade action adventure. The gameplay is smooth to handle and the visuals are nicely animated with wonderfully bright colors overall. Be aware though, the one hit kills really challenge the player to watch every step they take. <laughs> Xenophobe was developed by Epix and released by Atari in 1991 and is based on Bali Midway's arcade classic. Goal is simple and the player must defeat all the aliens before time runs out in each level. The homebrew community, years later, also have been developing some amazing titles for the handheld. I will leave you with one such a game that proves that the system does have major potential when created the right way.
Yeah.